it's your girl, Mysterious Jax. You are now tuned into Ladies Night Radio Show. And I'm here with my co-host, Mighty on the mic. Mighty, hey, hey. You, you need to be ready. I saw you rush into those headphones. Like, yes, I was like, oh, oh shit, oh. we're live. This is starting. And I like to hear what I sound like, just so you know, the people out there. And I have the same idea of what's going on. Um, but happy Friday, y'all. We're so happy that you're here. I'm so happy just to be here. Happy Friday. Feliz Viernes. Ooh. Es Viernes y el cuerpo lo sabe. Lo sabe. We Ooh. feel it. Your body Ooh, feels baby. it. So tonight, I'm really excited. We have a guest all the way oh, oh, oh. from the Bay. Yay! And, you know, he's a big Warriors fan, so I'm just going to leave that out there. Like, you know, uh, you know, I have hey. respect. Get the so Sharks yeah. ready. Start commenting, y'all. Get the Sharks ready. Know. So shout out to, to the Warriors. But, you know, this is a Lakers house. Uh, okay, yo, shout out. Lakers wow. house. Shout you out to the Lakers house. Oh, yeah, Stop. Yeah, yeah, yo, yeah. by the way, there's a parade that happens every year in Oakland uh, <laughs> this June. If you guys want to come wow. check it out. If you guys want to come check it out, Jackie, by all means, I'll be there. I told you not Mute. to bring him. Muted. Muted. I have the power. I'm there every year. I'm there every year. I'll at you. Oh, damn, that hurts. Why you got Why? What? Let me hold up. Damn. Damn. You had to go there, Jeremy? Really? You had to go there? Hey, it's you ladies' know, we're, night. We're having a tough. We got to take these drinks from him. <laughs> hey, I haven't even started, though. That's the worst part. What? what? Don't worry. We're going to get you on uh, 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 Truth or Shots right now. Already? No, not yet. Oh, not like, yet. That's, Damn, that's my second segment. That's my second segment. Uh, but yeah, I just want to introduce you real quick. If you want to talk about yourself real quick, real um, quick, real yes, quick, real let quick. Know. Let them are. know who who oh. is Jeremy. Who is you? Who is you? And what are <laughs> so, you doing at Ladies Night Radio? My name is Jeremy Michael Vasquez. I'm an activist. I'm an author, spoken word artist. Very blessed right now to be in this space. Actually, um, I have some strong connections to LA. I used to go to school out here. Shout out to Cal State University, San Bernardino. Shout out to mm-hmm. all the people out here grinding in college. Clap it up, actually, because that Yay. shit's hard. Like, and yes. I got some alumni in the building tonight, so we lit. Yeah. Uh, about to sing the alma mater. We, and, <laughs> we have the amazing Keith Good News in the yes. building. Yes! Come on, clap it up, Keith! Hey. Gang, gang, gang. And we got Miss Danny from Sweet Community. Danny! Hey, Kitty! For your cupcakes and cakes and all your sweet treats. Man. Hit up Sweet Community. Ooh, Ooh. that was a good commercial. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna get paid for that ad later. Get, get the handle. Get, get the handle for that. It's, it's at Sweet Community. You know, at you at should Sweet record Community. that and put that on your on your record page. Record it. Put record it on. It. Okay, put Danny. It on. Danny makes some sweet. And honestly, you just posted this uh, margarita cupcake that what? looks amazing and has tequila in it. And I need to try it. I need that. Yes. Okay, bring those to me. I want to try that margarita cupcake. Do you hear this? Margarita my birthday's in two weeks, so <laughs> what I would like for my birthday is exactly what you just said. Margarita cupcakes. Oh, just yeah. That. Margarita cupcakes. <laughs> 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 they really got tequila in it. I'm so I'm so excited. Like, when she I, posted it, I was man, like... Man, <gasps> I can't even think straight no more. I'm distracted. <laughs> 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 I'm over here craving those cupcakes. I'm going to forget the actual conversation, but right, I... Right, right. And then we also have my amazing producer who puts... Uh, all the stuff behind yes. the together. Yay. The amazing Cozy. Cozy! Oh, <laughs> Run it. Run oh, it. and my far fans here. Hi, Myra. Hi, Myra. Hey, Myra. That's- oh, this is. No, oh. no, that's not okay, my sister. Okay, okay, You'll okay. know Maria when she comes okay, in. Okay. Maria is my sister. You'll okay. know when it, when she comes in. You'll okay. Know. <laughs> she don't need no man. introduction. I can't wait for that. Yeah, Yo, man. before you even go on with the show, I just want to say how beautiful this room looks. Like, I'm Damn. cheesing pretty hard right now because there's beautiful people in here. And this is why mm-hmm. I love coming to L.A. Like, it's spiritual, it's physical, it's emotional. Like, y'all y'all showing me love. I got all these bottles of, like, alcohol next to me. I have all these beautiful people here to do some great conversations today. Like, I'm so humbled to be in your space. And I'm very grateful that you're yeah. giving me access to this beautiful ladies night well yeah for sure we actually met through the good news when um i had when i was co-hosting the good news radio show with keith you were a guest you came in twice but you were a guest once <laughs> and that's when i met your crazy self and now look at here look at us now look at us now we're homies and friends inseparable <laughs> wait are you trying to take my picture hold on let me I like fix that. my hair real quick get your hair did uh, hair flip okay. uh, let me don't pose. hurt nobody <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Keith is taking my picture over here, so don't it just apologize makes me. Um, I, had, I had to get a spotlight. spotlight. Don't apologize for your greatness, though. Okay. Okay. All right. 
So uh, welcome to Ladies Night Radio, Jeremy. I'm glad you came through. I know that you have the craziest schedule. You were just in Denver. Yeah, I was. And I wasn't even sure if you were going to come, if you are going to be in San Diego. <sighs> I was like, you need to let me know. Like, I literally just made that flyer today because, like, you, like, answered me yesterday. I did, yeah. So yeah. this is, this. if you guys thought I overbooked with yeah. different events, this guy has so many, so many events that you got going on, so, which is amazing. I just want to say, before I even get into that, you mm-hmm. are exactly where you need to be. Yeah, like exactly. message. That's Amen. a real message. Like message. message. Take that home with you, right? Message. Tuck that in your drink. Like exactly where you're at, where I'm at, where we intersect. Ain't no coincidence. Yeah. So I just want to be intentional with everything we do. And mm-hmm. that right there, my schedule is hella busy, so is yours. Everybody in this room got a schedule. Yeah. You feel me? The fact we're all right here right now tells me that we were gathered for this. There's for some sure. magic about to happen in here. So Yes, definitely. Intentional. Yeah. And we actually just went to um the high school I used to work at. Um, not too long ago, about a month ago, I had asked, reached out to to Jeremy about speaking to these to these boys. Beautiful. And it was specifically boys that that needed this conversation. Beautiful brown boys. And it was about um, yeah. what was the topic that you toxic uh, masculinity, machismo behavior, sexual harassment, all of that. We got a lot of things we work on in our community. Yes. So yeah, we got a lot of stuff it's happening cultural. in our communities. And so, today yeah. we went to go visit. You know, all those boys ran up to him and were so excited to see him. <laughs> and it literally like <laughs> because it's like it not, matters to them. It they matters. Don't see themselves. This is a speaker that came uh, to talk to them, and uh, now he's back visiting to see how they're doing. Talk. Yeah. And one we'll of us, talk. one of us actually uh, let us know he got accepted to Humboldt uh, State University. Oh, he what? was so excited was to proud. tell us that he got into college. He should be proud. He That's was an accomplishment. So proud. And you know what's crazy is he said he only applied as a joke. He didn't think he was going to get in. Man. It's the confidence. It's the confidence uh, that self worth yeah. thing. It's Yo. um, what your influencers tell you you are. Uh-huh. It's, me and Jeremy both looked at each other like, that is amazing oh, right now. Oh, just this conversation got my eyes teary. Like, yeah. I know what's happening. Let's just get right to it. I know what they're saying about brown people right now. I know yeah. what they're saying about us being rapists and animals and how society treats us. So when he's doing that, that's a huge step for not just him. That's for all of us. Yeah. That's a huge, giant yeah. shit on every naysayer, every statistic, everybody running around here trying to make us the enemy of state. Yeah. Trying to pull a Nazi camp on us now? Mm-hmm. That's like a giant spit in the face. Because yeah. we're more than what they say we are. So yeah. go get your crown. Go get that money. Go get the education. And fuck all these rumors and all these negative influences that say what you ain't. Yeah. Woo! Let them know. You took them to church. You took them to church. Let them right, know. Where we at with Do this? we have the shots fired? Let's uh, take it. I'm ready. Sound right. effect in like here? A little pew, pew sound. Is pew. There, I don't even know. I don't think we have it. Pew. But that was that was really dope. We needed to hear that. But that's what we're going to be talking about today. Toxic masculinity. <laughs> just to give you an idea what the topic is for today. Uh, but tonight, let's go ahead and jump into the first segment. Yes. Ooh, our favorite. That favorite. Story time. Story time. Story time. Story time. Okay, so I'm going to share a story. Uh, that's usually how I start the show. And it all kind of connects um, usually. So this story. So what I'm going to talk about today is uh, my first job. So my first job ever was when I was about 16 years old. Um, I had a tia that worked at Savon's Pharmacy. Uh, and so she hooked me up. Actually, the one in Inglewood. On, um, it's now CVS. It's now CVS. But back in the day, it was it's called Savon's. Savon's. Shout out to Savon's. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I was a, I got hired to be the cashier in the pharmacy. So I always joked that my first job was selling drugs. It was. It was though. <laughs> it was low key though. I mean, I was 16. I was a cashier, and that was you know it was pretty cool to experience that. So you worked. In, we worked in a small space. Um. So my short my story is gonna be quick, but it's gonna kind of give you an idea of what to- tonight is about. So there was a pharma um uh, pharmacist, and he was I want to say Middle Eastern, and his personality was very like um, I want to say from what I can remember because this was a long time ago. He was very short with me and just like women in general. I think in his culture, they're just not like, obviously, like, you know, women just started driving. Um, yeah. yeah. And so that can just give you an idea of how like women lack of respect. women are treated in, in. Yeah. And so he would even tell me stories of like women with this because I would I was t- taught to speak up for myself. And there was things that like he would say and I didn't agree with or Let's just say we bumped heads, Mm -hmm. okay? Uh, You know, and I am a stubborn person, and I just feel like... But I also feel... Treat people the way you want to be treated. And so I would would be respectful, because I was always taught, respect your elders. But, like, we just bumped heads. So... Back in the day when um, the pharmacists, they come over, they explain the drugs to you. And then as a cashier, um, I'm supposed to um, – and after they explain the drugs to you, Mm -hmm. 
the you as a customer, you have to sign this little paper, this like sticker, like a waiver, like a waiver. Mm -hmm. And so um, I would peel the sticker off of their medicine, put it in this like notebook and I would stick it on the notebook itself. And then as the customer, you have to sign next to your name and the sticker. And so it was it was like a white binder that we had on the table and it was it would be moved around a lot because, you know, we would talk to the customers and whatnot. And so one one time, like I, I was ringing somebody up and the customer asked, oh, can I have the pharmacist explain this to me? And I said, sure. I called him over. He was explaining. Right. So get this. He is looking at the customer. He's probably like f- six feet tall or five, ten. And I'm five one. So, you know, and so I come over um, and, you know, I'm waiting by the cash register. And all of a sudden, um, so the binders in front of him a little bit to the side like this. And he's like talking with this with a customer across from him. Right. I come on the side of him to get the no, the binder. This is this is literally what I did. I reached over. Oh, that's the binder. Yeah. I reached over, put my hand on it, and I was sliding it towards me. Uh. But he's right there. I'm not gonna lie. Like my hand, he's there. But I'm shorter than him. He's yeah, and you're fi- not like in his face right. with your hand. You're grabbing the. binder. I literally put my hand in front of the binder and I started moving it towards me. You know what this guy did? What? Oh man. He grabbed me. He grabbed my arm. And you, and I had the marks after he grabbed my arm wow. and he's like, "What are you doing?" Like like and he like looks at me so mad wow. and then he throws my hand back wow. at me. Mind you, I'm six in front of the customer, in front of everybody. Wow. I was 16 years old. I was so embarrassed. Wow. I was like, "What is going HR. on?" Wow. I just <laughs> right right. It was crazy. And I was so <laughs> devastated. Because yeah, first of all, as a woman, uh, we're taught to like, yeah, be mm, docile, be respectful, right. get a te calladita, right? Um, don't make no problems. It might have been your fault. Yeah. What were you doing? And th- at that moment, I was more embarrassed than anything. The fact that he made a scene in front of people and he grabbed me. He literally put his hands on me. Oh, been hot. I was right, right, right. Like, and f- and I was more, I was more embarrassed than mad. It was crazy. Yeah. It's, so I, it was. So I rushed what? to the bathroom because, mm. and I just stayed there. And I just started crying. Damn. And I, I remember calling. I think I told my mom what happened. The next thing I know, it was I was in the in the bathroom for like thirty minutes. They yeah. were even knocking, like, "Can you come out?" Or, or you know, we want to check on you. And I was like, I was like, oh, okay, I'm coming out. And I was still crying, but I was like, what am I gonna do? Like that was really embarrassing and hurtful. And he literally grabbed my hand and threw it back yeah. at me and, and stuff, and yelled at me. The next thing I know. My mom shows up. My yes. brother shows up. My sister Turn up. shows up. They even called the cops. Like, I didn't call the cops. My, so I don't know if it was my mom or my sister who or if the pharmacy itself. Turn up. Somebody yeah. called the cops. The cops showed up. And um, they pretty much asked if I wanted to, like, make a report or whatever. I just let them know what happened. But honestly, nothing ended up happening. Of course from not. It. Right. The GM of the store pulled me into his office. And I know there's cameras. And I know yeah. that they saw everything. And he's like, you know, we looked over the cameras. Nothing. We, it, we can't see anything. So do you mm. still want to press charges? So they kind of, like... F- in a way, forced me not to press charges, yeah. kind of like saying I don't have a case. Yeah, they tried but to I was not even you. trying to get a case. I was literally just like, I Respect. just want an apology. Like, why did you do that? Like, what what made you think that was okay yeah. to put your hands on a sixteen year old girl at that time? Or anyone? And that was my first job, so I didn't know what to do. I didn't know. I was so yeah. confused, you know. And so I was just crying. And so that was like my story of like my experience of like this man who thought he could just do whatever he wants, yeah. and you know, and. I know it has to do with his culture or, or maybe his the way he was raised. I don't know. But it's just, it was something that still sticks to me until this day. Yeah. And not something that I would say is uncommon or or like a once, an isolated Damn, incident. Man. You know what I mean? It's not just his culture. It's not to say that this person from this particular ethnicity has this type of That's true. action. That's true. It's a dominated societal understanding that a lot of men yes. can do X and women cannot. And yeah. And so, it, it, it was a really scary situation. I just remember. Do you feel like you've learned from that, though? I definitely learned a lot in that in that moment. And just it was a scary situation. Yeah. But I, I felt really supportive for my family. Like yeah. the, my brother, I was like, I talked to somebody yeah. about this. Like my brother is very like a jokester. You know, my brother, Tony. Yeah. And the fact that he showed up, like it just showed me like, damn, like even though you clown on me, you do love me. Like you showed up yeah. when you heard somebody put their hands on their sister. So stuff like that. It just made me like more aware of, of the family and support that I had. Like I was like, I got people in my corner. Yeah. So but yeah, it was just a lesson learned. I don't think I went back to work there. But yeah. Can I say one thing? Yes. That's a hell of a story. I really want to applaud you for the courage to even bring that into this room. Yeah. A lot of listeners are going to benefit from that, including my students. Yeah. As you said that, there's this tweet that I saw that I just want to 
kind of follow that up with because it really connects what you just said to what everybody can probably relate to. Mm. This is from Kim Penn. And if you really want your mind blown, ask any woman how old they were the very first time they felt objectified or sexualized by a man or had something inappropriate said to them or had something not quite right happen to them. Most of us were children the first time. Damn. Mm. Who was that by? I just, I don't know. I'll close my phone. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. That's Kim true, Penn. Though. Yeah, yeah. Dang, As you're tearing up those tacos, though. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you leave, right. that, though. you leave my mighty right. in the mic. She's hungry. <laughs> leave me alone. Leave me alone. Why I'm you guys sorry. tell people that? I'm sorry. We make shit happen, okay? We got drinks. Okay. We got She's food. lying. I'm just kidding. She ain't eating nothing. Right, so I right. got people in the, in the comments. We have Kathy, who's also from the Bay. She says, go Warriors. Go Warriors. Hey, Kathy's from LA, though. Kathy's from LA. And, She's from LA. And Sharika. Sharika says, go Warriors. Too. Let's go. Brrr, hey, I'll see you with the parade. <laughs> oh my god. Anyways, LA's coming for y'all. Don't trip. LA's coming for y'all. Hey, join the list. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, okay, that's that's Hey, back. shout out to Kathy Lee. Uh, I went to school with her, man. Like we've been doing this for like a decade. She's one of my dearest people in my life. So I just want to shout her out for her support, always encouraging me, always being there. A lot of people talk about friendship, talk about having your back, but then when you start your own business, right? When you start getting serious about your grind, where they at though? Mm, uh, yeah. That's all at? I'm going to say. Where are they at? Where are they at? That wraps up first segment, which is story time. I love sharing stories with you guys um, yes. as long as I remember them. I might not remember all the details, but that's, you know, the base of it. We love it. Um, Gabriella Marcel, she's in the comments. She says that, Jeremy, he's right. We do all have something that starts off as a kid. Come on, yo. Shout out, Gabby. I see you out here from the city. So love. And Kathy wants to know what tacos you're eating, buddy. <laughs> what tacos you got, yo? Kathy, mind your damn business. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. Hold on. And Kier- she is banging Kirsten, my homie. Shout out to Kirsten, who's in the chat room. She <laughs> is from Never Not Extra here on the Good News Radio. You can catch her show every <laughs> Tuesday at 830. Her and Moni. That's right. We plug each other. That's what we do here uh, at the Good News. Bet. We family. Bet. Come on. Woo, Come on. Keith Run it up. You can find Keith Good News Monday morning. Keith Good News. Every Monday at 8 a.m. Hey, shout out to Keith Good News. He's really inspired me this year. Seeing him fly off with his business, really kind of make this a passion of his. It really has inspired me to kind of push my That's entrepreneurship. That's right. We're in his station, his like, studio yo, right here. Can we clap it up for my hey. man right here? Can we, can we clap it up for my hey. man? Like, so it's Black Boy Joy some love. Come on. That's right. Black boy joy. I love it. I love it. I love it. Ooh. Now we're going into my f- second favorite segment. Mm-hmm. Dun, 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 dun. We're going to play a game. Are you ready for a game, game, game Ooh, time, boy. game time, game time? Oh, Are you boy. ready for a game, 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 huh. game, game? Okay. That was, that, that was cheesy. <laughs> that was so bad. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Womp, womp. Can we do a womp, womp I wasn't going to do nothing with that. But we got an A for effort, though, y'all. <laughs> you I, know sat, I sat that out. <laughs> You were dancing. We saw. We saw that head shake. The shoulder shrug. Yeah. Ah, damn. It's all in the hip. It's safe. (laughs) So the game we're playing tonight, uh, we are gonna play truth or shot. Shot. Mm -hmm. Okay, you don't even know yet. You You, can't opt for that. Yeah. No. You have to at least answer the question. Take a shot if you want. That's not fair. I know you like to drink, but that takes the fun out of it. You don't know that. (laughs) All the groups you go to once a week, we know. (laughs) (laughs) I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's anonymous. That's anonymous group. (laughs) Because we support you. Identity. Damn, (laughs) Dinale. It's because you tried to come for the Lakers, so I just had to throw that out there. Oh, man. It's real. Let's go. Come on. Yeah, he's taking his... Drag yeah. it off. I'm out. Let's Jack, go. you we gotta go. Up. We turn up. Start the car. Getting heavy, <laughs> heavy. All right, all right. Let's let's go ahead and go into uh, the game. I love that song. <laughs> so uh, short. All right, Jeremy, because you are the guest, you get What's to up? go first. Ooh. Where right. are the questions right here? What are here? the questions? Ooh. You have to pick a popsicle. Yo, I didn't know this part of the show wasn't happening, so it's really like some real spontaneous pick one. Pull one out. improv. Pull one out. Damn, you're just pulling like five out. <laughs> Oh, y'all playing me tonight, huh? A little. It's the, you know what? This is the home team. I feel like I'm the visitor for show. LA, bet, baby. LA, bet, all day. Bet. I'm what, Steph what, Curry what, with a shot. What, what is this? You got to go to the ugly. Oh, answer. It might go all the way to the back, too. How many sex toys do you own? 
<laughs> it's taking too long. Going right there, right? So I actually don't have any toys. I don't pleasure myself with toys. You can um, pleasure her. Or yeah, your partner. I have hands for that, and I have other body parts that work. So I don't need to. Uh, I don't know. There's I, nothing wrong with. I toys. don't want to say there's anything wrong, but the question was, how many <laughs> sex toys do you own? And I asked you, and I answered the question very honestly. All right, all right. You can still take a shot. Yeah. If you want. All right. Man, all right. Shot, 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 shot. something come out the gate. That's something come out the gate. <laughs> All right. You know what, Keith? Come here. I don't need yeah, you to do can one. Can you do one, please? Come on, Keith. Get All on right. The mic. All right, come on. Pull one Man, out. it's heavy. Pull one out. Pull it out. That's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> wah, wah, we ain't wah. ready. Right. It says, if you could make out with uh, <laughs> any Disney character, who? Ooh. 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 Make out with a Disney character. Now I got to think about, like. Princess Jasmine. You know, I always had a thing for Snow White. Yeah. Ugh. Why is that? I'm like, yeah, I you don't know. You know what? Because the fact that she cared about Dopey. <laughs> so much. I'm not gonna lie. Like she would have been a good mother. That, yeah, I just felt I'm like make you know what? Like I just I love you. Like, you, <laughs> care, <laughs> you care about people. That's the most caring person. I see some role playing going with on right seven there. men just, and didn't get with any of them. I'm just saying, man. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Snow White can get it. Ooh, Danny, you better go get your Snow White outfit, girl. Damn, <laughs> role play. <laughs> Role play, yo. Somebody hey, just, Halloween. yo. Somebody text me and said, uh, "Step my sex game up." Ooh, yeah. damn! They're calling you out. I'm telling hey, you, at these toys really make a difference. They Got do. You. you know they do. You don't. Nec- it's not a bad thing. You're just adding stuff right. to the game, like handcuffs or toys. You know, whips. You know, mm. you know, you know. Danny over there raising her hand. Right, she went. Hey, she seen me. I, uh, <laughs> 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 Is she next? Is she next? Yeah. You know what? Come yeah, on, she Danny. next. Yeah. Danny. 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 Come on. Come on. No, Danny. you can't do that. Danny. 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 Huh. Huh. Jump on it. Jump on it. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. Ooh, look at her it face. It says, have you ever tasted your sweat? Yeah. That- she said, duh. I mean, that. I guess when it runs down your face, maybe. What's on the back? A blank. Oh, shit. <laughs> Let me pull Wait, cool. wait. <laughs> See, I want a better question than this. I want something better. I want something juicy. Okay. okay. It says. All right, no. No. What's your biggest fear? Ooh. Ooh. Um, Pretty little fears. Music to my ears. Um. Forest fire. I. That's. Hey, I thought these were um not as deep. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to be funny. They, some, I guess she slips them in no, there. They're okay. usually all like. What's your biggest fear? I think um, my biggest fear is not. Um, I have expectations for myself, and if I don't meet those goals or expectations, I'm really like the hardest person on me. So okay. not meeting goals and not meeting you. my personal expectations uh, gives me anxiety a lot. Damn, and gives me fear because you have to. Yeah, I feel. Yeah, you. I'm a person like I'm really aggressive, I guess, and then uh, I'm like a big winner. So if I'm losing in something. Or if I'm not meeting it, I already translate that to being a loser. So, ooh, yeah. okay, it's heavy. Yeah. yeah, it is. It's real heavy, huh? I'm happy I can be honest about that because yeah. it took me a Thank while you. to realize. You know, yeah. I am a person Thank that you. look at things win or lose instead of mm. like growth. learning and mm. growth and mm. things like that. So, yeah, self awareness. Hey. Like yeah. Thank you for sharing Beautiful. that. Hey, Black Girl Magic. Hey. Black Girl Magic. Hashtag Black Girl Magic. Look like this though. I know. Can we take a picture? This is what we mean. When we Danny, see Black Girl Magic, can we get this a picture of her? Mean. She Bet. looks so cute with her hair. I love when Poof you do balls. your hair like that. Poof balls. I mean, you're cute always, but. <laughs> <laughs> What's that video? Who got that? Ooh, I think Kosi got it. Got Kosi, we're going to post that. Just, ooh, we're posting uh, that. All right, Mighty, you're next, girl. Oh, my gosh. Uh-oh. I always lose. No, this is not a losing game. Okay. It's just truth or shot. Just have a good question. <laughs> What song do you make love to? <laughs> What's your go-to song when you make love? I can honestly say I don't use songs. You don't got a playlist? No. Because right then I want to do it to the beat of the song. <laughs> and ah! so sometimes it doesn't vibe with what you want to do. Throw ass so I just, yeah, it just throws yep. the whole, so I just, yeah, we, we there's no. no music. <laughs> wow. No music. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, shit. So nobody's taking shots. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a game. Oh, my God. 
I'll take a shot for everybody yeah, listening. Let's all right, hey, yeah. for everybody, Cheers. yo, can Cheers. we just for, for everybody listening? Can you guys ask a question that you would like to have us answer? And well, we'll take this shot for you. Oh, I like okay. that. Change yeah. it up. Go Change in, it up. Go into the chat. Somebody room. asks us a, a question you want us to say, and we'll answer it for Ooh, you. There's a lot of good questions on Give here. Give us something good. We want it good and juicy. I mean, Ga- Gabriella is asking. I think a good question for a man's perspective is: Do they? This is deep do they ever feel sexually harassed i mean as a woman i know we do but like what about men like do they wow what's sexual harassment so let me just well let's 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 end this segment all right transition thank and you, let's just jump into it gabriella uh into our topic of tonight which is toxic masculinity right. yeah. so we're gonna go ahead and uh, jump into that and right. answer that question right. jeremy so I feel... I think we should describe first what yeah. toxic masculinity is for those of us. Set it up. Okay. Oh. Um, I would describe it as a, a phenomenon that's more of a cultural right. um, characteristic where men are um, held to certain expectations right. that are often belittling to their gender counterpart women. And this is really pushed from childhood where men are or young boys can do something as simple as go outside and play whereas their sisters or other girls cannot so it's something simple like that that starts off and then as they grow older it manifests into something that really is poisonous not just to them their relationship to women but also their relationship to other men okay and the definition i did find online can we clap it up for that yes. though? because that was pretty, pretty yes. good. Okay. I don't know where that, was going. that was really good <laughs> that was really good. All right. So it also refers to society's expectations of how a traditional male should behave. Ideas related to toxic masculinity mm-hmm. have been normalized in society. Mm-hmm. Comments like "be a man," uh, yes. "that's girly," uh, "man up," uh, and "boys don't cry" Woo! stem from this attitude. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah. kind of like what you were talking about. Man. Much simpler, though. <laughs> <laughs> well. You, well, it's, I mean, it's good to see, hear all of that. So how would you answer that question um, that she had for you, Jeremy? So I just want to say, before I begin to that, how men suffer first. Okay. From this ideology she spoke of, right? Okay. So we silently agree to disconnect from our hearts, emotions, and intuition, and to be an instrument of domination and a recipient of the hollow promises it provides. But that being said, I can even imagine the first time I was sexually harassed, I couldn't say that to nobody. Do you know how much that means like a punk? What happened to you? You did what? Nah, man. Nobody touched me. Nobody sexually harassed me. Like, do you know how many friends of mine that were molested that never had the courage to say it when they were mm-hmm. young? Mm-hmm. So let's just get right to it. Let's get right to the conversation, right? right? Like, It keeps us in shelter of who we are Yes. as we rot from the inside out. And I think that's how we bring the toxic energy to other people, right? Women, children, everybody else. We're, we're dealing with this kind of hell that we've been living with our whole life. Yep. And we're not going to suffer alone, so we're going to bring that same ideology to you. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, it also society also like forces males to feel that they have to take control of the relationship, mm-hmm. the household, uh, public situations. Like, so you guys have all that pressure Wait. on you as men because it's yeah. been put on you since you were young that you have to take charge. You got to be the man of the house instead of using it like a partnership mm-hmm. with your your partner. You know what I'm saying? I remember the first time, and this is we are just going to be a real hundred hundred percent yes, conversation today. Let's do it. I remember the first time in high school, my coach called a teammate a pussy. And what? we all laughed. We were like, ah, Josh, you're a pussy. Like, coach called you a pussy. Like, a dozen young men are looking at one of them and calling them a pussy in front of a whole track team. And that's seen as, like, a, like the biggest insult yeah. ever, not yeah. knowing that, like, you came from one. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. That's How deep. do we, like, correct that? Wow. So where do you want to begin? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously, it starts as young, like as women, as men. So I wanted to make it clear that this show tonight, because I know a lot of people were like, oh, you're going to be man bashing. You're going to talk. Yeah. It's not. We're not man bashing. <laughs> I know this show's called Ladies Night Radio, but it does not mean that we are like against men or we have like the opposite of what uh, Al Bundy had, the No Ma'am Club or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that show? Mm-hmm. Married with he Children. Man, Woman Hater Club. Right. And that was like, that's actually a toxic, like, uh, yeah. you know. Know, situa- like a Situation character, too, yeah. a character of that show. I mean, we all looked at it, we all laughed at it, but that whole show is like real toxic. No, right there. let's talk about toxic. Last night I saw Friday. Oh, 
So here we go, right? Culture. Let's protect the culture. Like, don't you talk about Friday. Leave Friday alone, oh, right? Oh, that's a good right? one. Right? Yeah, yeah, yo. Don't do that. Don't out him, right? Right. Keep it to yourself. It's a classic. I, yeah, that's a classic. That's it's the a culture. Classic. But we, we, we ain't going to mention the domestic abuse that it was funny when, when Debo was talking about being this girl when she had a black eye, when there were certain things that happened in there, like the levels of bitches and hoes that you hear during the entire movie that yeah. Smokey sank. And it's funny. Come on, man. It's funny, right? Right. But if that was your daughter or your sister or your mother, it wouldn't be so funny. And the, the whole movie, it's like an oxymoron. Right. Because we in our culture love it because it reflects us. Yeah. And the sad part is yeah. that has become acceptable. Yep. Yeah. And that's what happens when art reflects society. Yeah. I mean, it, it all stems from how you were raised. I'm going to give you another example. I was um, reading somebody's Facebook post that they put. It was like a Robin Williams, like, kind of like post that said, like, you know, when you're sad, um, check kind of like check on your funny friends, your happy friends, because even that they know what it feels like to be sad or depressed. Yeah. So they try to make other people laugh and, and be happy. So I noticed it and I sent him a private message and I was like, I was like, hey, are you all right? Is everything good? How are you doing? He's like, I'm good. Everything's good. I was like, have you been sad recently? Like, are you sad? Are you good? I just was out there mm. with it. And so his response was like, yeah, about a month ago. And then I was like, mm. I was like, well, what's wrong? Like, you know, um, why were you feeling sad? And what helped you not be sad anymore? And his response was like, nothing. I did nothing. I was just down uh, all the time for like three weeks straight, maybe more. Not sure what from. Um, I just know I wasn't happy. Uh, but I have this mentality where I just shrug shit off and hold my head high even when I'm not all right. I won't let it get the best of me. I don't like to cry. Not sure when is the last time I cried. And I don't like to talk about my emotions. So I didn't talk to anyone about it. So this person is still holding that sadness and didn't even realize what made them sad. Yeah. And they're probably still sad. But they're like, I'm just going to get over it. And these are most males. Like, they won't share emotion. Yeah. They won't cry. They don't like to cry. Yeah. All of that. Out of fear of seeming, I almost think, weak. Because, you know, it's like, no, women are the ones who, who seek counsel, who, who cry, who have all these, like, big emotions. And I feel like the men are just supposed to be cool, calm, and collected. So there's some sort of, like, a stigma. And you, I mean, I can only imagine what it feels like to know that maybe I can't voice myself mm -hmm. or be free to cry. So mm -hmm. it's interesting, though, the power dynamic of that, though, because when women cry, it's like, eh, you know, she's a woman, she's yeah. crying. But when a man does it, it's either seen as, like, a weakness or something like, oh, it's serious, he's crying. Two things. But, like, women can't be taken serious in that same manner. That was a good point you just used. I, I want to say, there's a quote, so I'm, I just like to connect conversations. No, yeah. There's a quote called, it's easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. And that is where we're at right now at society, <clears throat> repairing broken men. When I cry, because I cry, I'm a poet, I'm an author, I talk to Q, I talk to youth. I'm, I'm in jails, right? I'm in juvie. I'm in the real places where people talk about going and nobody there. The hopelessness that I see is real. And in those spaces, I get <sighs> overwhelmed. So when I drop a tear, I have all the kids' respect. Like They'll yeah. be on some like, damn, bro, like that was real. I, I never seen a man cry before. Yeah. And, you know, for them who have been used to suffering in silence, when they see someone express pain or vulnerability for the first time, it makes a huge impact on them. And it gives them permission, right, unconsciously. If I shine my light a little bit, if I look inside of my brokenness and I can correct and I can, you know, have the conversation about what, what's hurting, it'll give somebody courage to voice their own pain. Yeah. I, I, go ahead. I do agree with that in, like, setting the example and, like, being some, like somebody that somebody can see in, in you. But I also will say that it's not just our men, right, that are, that are seeing mm -hmm. this and, and acting on it. I also feel like it is some women who deem it okay right so there's the songs the tv shows the bitches the hoes there's women that say it women that use it women that are okay oh, being yeah. called that so you're right it's not just men perpetuating this mm -hmm. this ideal this like negative effect on society it's also women so it's like the way that we're raised it's all so intertwined like the way that masculinity affects not just men but also women yeah i mean i definitely have heard other women tell like if, even if they're single moms raising their kids don't cry don't cry man up i've heard that out of females too so yeah. i get it but like the question is like what what can we do as a community to improve that and 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 i and that's the reason i really wanted jeremy here is because he's He's doing his part. Mm -hmm. He is going to different high schools, different schools. 
schools, elementaries. Um, he just came back from like Denver. He's gone to jails. He's gone to uh, rehab centers to talk to youth about about sharing these emotions. Like he's yeah. literally like I've seen videos of him where like crying or yeah. or just sharing or being so raw that the kids are like, dude, is this guy like this is a man. A man in front of me yeah. sharing his emotions, crying, yeah. sharing his story. Like and they and it's and, and it's just incredible. So I feel like that's one thing that he as one person he's decided to do. You know what I'm saying? But what as like other people can we do mm -hmm. to help change that? Because we want to help heal these mm -hmm. young boys. We mm -hmm. want to heal them before they get yeah. to that that part. Because then what are we doing? We're complaining about these uh. toxic men. Yeah. Come on. So let's start from the youth. Let's start from yeah. when they're they're like at that age. I think it's really important just as we're here to have this conversation. These ain't conversations we have at Christmas time. We don't talk about the uncle that's beating on his wife. We don't talk about the the cousin that is being molested. We keep shit so low key. We like protect so people's true. honor. Mm -hmm. And while we suffer and their honor is protected, like right. we gotta take it home. Like I don't wanna hear you talking about let's do something powerful to change the world. Change the reflection in the mirror. Yeah. Look in the mirror. Have a conversation. If you're a bystander, stop being a bystander. Right. If you are married to someone that puts their hands on you and you're telling your children to do, the, do this and do that, they're looking at your example. Right. So it's about taking accountability for what you're going through and speaking on it. I want to jump into the, the chat box real quick. I have uh, Gabriella that she yeah. says, I really feel gender roles play such a big factor when in reality we all have feelings and have our own have mm. our opinions so this is a great topic um then we also have victoria and i want to just acknowledge all of you i see you guys i'm just trying to yes. get um sophie coleman she says hi gabby or i'm um, hi everybody i I just want to make sure i'm acknowledging what does sophia you. say that's, that's one of my students oh she just said hi to gabby um and then victoria says do you feel um demasculated when a female asks you out or takes the first step <laughs> to taking lead in the relationship and is the breadwinner. That's from Victoria I'll Elliott. Answer that. I'm Can I answer that? Oh, Can I answer that? You. Oh, man. She's asking huh, you. So I come from a house full of women and that sets up my story. Like a lot of women have always been the leaders, the movers and shakers. So when a woman takes initiative like that, it means, I mean, she must come from a similar background or she must have this ferocity that she's been able to like not hide from. Right. So when a woman takes initiative with me, it's a huge turn on because I'm used to being in that role. I'm used to kind of initiating. I'm used to kind of being someone that looks out and goes for it. So when a woman can like meet me there and kind of sweep me off my feet in the sense of she'll approach me first, right. I am spellbound. And yeah. um, it happens, you know, because I know a lot of strong women in the Bay Area that have that upbringing. They're all like, if it's going to get done, I got to do it myself. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really take me to be demasculinized when I honor it. Right. But I don't lean on it. Like, oh, well, I got a woman coming every time to help me out so I can just do nothing and then someone will come rescue me. I don't have that mentality where I take advantage of it. Right. So I don't wait for them to come holler at me because, you know, that's not how I was raised. But also I'm very aware that if a woman has that in her to be a breadwinner, to be the one that's out here making it rain. And I'm just like, well, women of color will ultimately lead the next revelation, revolution anyway. So I'm down to follow. Yeah. Um, and kind of play my part. Yeah. Um, I want to read something that I kind of found online while I was research researching this. Um, it's, and it, this is referring to the cultures. It, so masculinity, toxic masculinity exists throughout the cultures, expressing itself in different manners. In the Latin X culture, toxic masculinity comes in the form of machismo. And all of us here know what that is. Um, my sister's here, Anna, and we have Myra. If you guys want to get on the mic too, feel free. Um, machismo refers to the, the social belief that <laughs> males must adhere to traditionally masculine stereotypes. And I'm going to go ahead and fast and uh, maintain dominance over the woman. And that's that's for sure. That's a truth right there. That's a fact. Um, but I want to go really quick and lean down to where it says, um, given the place of men of color relative to white males in the United States, social hierarchy, there is an added pressure to act hyper masculine. Mm -hmm. I was just about to so say as to gain the dominance they feel they lack in society mm -hmm. because men of color do not often have the same opportunities right. as yeah. white males, right. such as job yeah. prospects. They feel they lack the control and must make up for their perceived loss of masculinity through exaggerated stereotypical masculine behavior. Often violent so, or right. aggressive. Men of color in our society right now are often, especially black and brown men, are the ones that are targeted the most, right? They're the highest ones um, in jails, harassed by cops, the the they are less likely to get a job. Yeah. So then their toxic masculinity or their machismo is probably heightened and it's taken out on who? The people that are 
that are surrounded, surrounding them the most, the ones that are loving them, their women, their kids. And at the end of the day, I was I want to go back to Jackie and to your point, Jeremy. Jeremy's point of mm -hmm. where does it start? And before we can even start addressing it with our society and with kids, we have to address it with ourselves mm -hmm. because it is so ingrained in mm -hmm. our implicit bias mm -hmm. right. that the first thing is to name it. Like, mm -hmm. Do I mm -hmm. succumb to, to to gender roles? Do I succumb mm -hmm. to some of that masculinity? And if so, mm -hmm. you know, how do I interrupt that for myself? Mm -hmm. Because then I perpetuate it with like the guys that I seek out, the mm -hmm. guys that I date, my if mm -hmm. I have kids and the kids that I am in front of every single day at schools. So we first have to acknowledge it for ourselves. <laughs> um, and interrupt that and say, where does that come from? And for us, you know, it might come from our dad or our brothers. And um, at the end of the day, it's like this cycle. And how do you yeah. break that cycle? It's it's almost like it's just so connected to, like we were talking about tradition, cultures, the I, this misogyny that has always is, existed. So to admit that there's toxic masculinity is to admit that there's something wrong with misogyny, which is to admit it. that there's no power in mm -hmm. gender exactly. roles, which a lot of people are not going to be okay with because that is... And, the, and, and to say gender the roles norm. is different, right? Because everybody had a role in society. Like our people of color back in the community of indigenous yeah. times, right? Before colonialism, women were very powerful. Women yeah. came together. They were they were also hunter gatherers. They were pe they were seen as like very high up. They were yeah. very re well respected and loved. And it is during colonialism and men taking over and raping women of color, indigenous women of color taking over. Like yeah, that's when I think power. that started happening. Mm -hmm. And because it wasn't in African culture or Latino culture, right? In La Quesh Ubuntu, like I am because you are. And it wasn't there at one point. So yeah. colonialism kind of started part a lot of that. Yeah, the and toxicity. so we have to interrupt it, right? That machismo, we have to interrupt it. And that's just like somebody exerting power over another person. But the first person that you can start with is yourself. Yeah. You have to start with you. Like, how am I perpetuating this in who I date and how I'm raising my child and how I show up to work? Am I perpetuating it? Because we want to be mad at everybody else, but we don't want to look at ourselves. Like uh, Jeremy said, the man in the mirror. Man, look, and that's why I just want to say before you even move on, like, we should clap it up for that. Because oh, that, yes. was, that was hella, that was like, everything she said was facts. Everything she said was just amazing and accurate. And just someone listening to that, that's younger right that comes from a place of different family maybe i grew up afro latino so in my family my let's keep it real my the grandmother my my grandmother took care of everybody she cooked food she paid the bills my grandfather sat in his ass all day watching tv mm. and had the nerve to complain about food not tasting right mm. i never saw him ever cook for her hold a door for her tell her i loved you yeah kiss her so affection. i could be affection affection yeah. so i just see this guy who thinks he's privileged or he just deserves the world but isn't willing to lift a finger and like for me growing up in my culture because i come from a more Af you know more black background we just expect women to raise us our whole life mm -hmm. we don't want to be a man why be a man when they can help us out take care of us forever like our mom did mm -hmm. right so this is huge just weight that we don't want to recognize and you said it and i kind of alluded to it looking in the mirror is how these things change you can't change the world if you can't look in the mirror and take ownership and that takes a lot of courage mm -hmm. and people are lacking the courage to look in the mirror because they don't look at everybody else and say something about how you're living and not be real and keep it honest i think go i think that that is a good point what if you've already been able to have the power to self-reflect and accept that there is something wrong because Sometimes it's like you can show people a documentary, you can show them the facts, and they still don't want to admit that there is something wrong with that. Um, the way that they go about things in their relationships and the way that they um, treat others or value others, because sometimes it's not so much a violence, right? A man can be um, exhibit toxic masculinity without being violent. It could be in microaggressions. It can be in the way he regards women and the way he regards his counterparts, and they might not see it. So I guess sometimes, like, I don't know, for some other people, it's like, how do you even get somebody mm -hmm. to recognize? Well, okay, so let's talk about 
what Jeremy said earlier. He said he's cried in front of crowds. He's cri fri cried in front of people. And I think that's where it starts, too. I think men need to create affinity groups or some type of support group because at the first, like, you first have to feel safe with each other and feel like it's normalized to say, hey, this weight feels really mm -hmm. heavy. Yeah. And, <laughs> I have you know, because, like, I yeah. know that women yeah. – it's natural for women to come together and be yeah. collaborators and be community. Even if we don't know each other, right. I'm like, girl, like, let's cry in the bathroom. Right. And But for men, you know, that's something that's starting to come up. It's starting to come up in a lot of the gay communities, mm -hmm. but why not come up in the, in the mm -hmm. you know, people of color communities mm -hmm. and the male communities of color and say, let's come together, let's cry, let's talk about this because, you know, the weight of the world feels heavy and heavy. let's not take it out on our women. Mm -hmm. Let's Let's talk about it and where is this hurt coming from and i think it's important that you say that we in the black family in black culture are like who's gonna change the world because we're yelling at the top of our lungs <laughs> white people speaking right. up is how the revolution begins how equality begins right white women allies white yeah allies right so in this certain situation of toxic masculinity you know who has to step up us because we've done most of the wrong right we benefited from all of the privileges it's going to take us stepping out of our comfort zone and risking our privilege. Yeah. That's how this shit changes. Yes. Yeah, it really is because the only and, and there's nothing to lose, really. It's a lot of gain. It's a lot of like your own personal peace, your own sense of value and worth. And it's like you can't. I mean, I guess maybe you could, but I feel like you cannot feel good knowing that you treated somebody wrong because that's not who you are. But you're controlled by all these other things. And you know you're somebody that you're not supposed to be. And Jeremy, you're you're black and brown, right? So yes, you I have am. both beautiful cultures, powerful. and that's powerful, powerful. But it's also like powerful, like the male yeah. Latino, like the yeah. sexy man, the the black, you know, sexy man. And then you have them both, yeah. and then it's like you have to be a certain way oh, that yeah. society portrays you, and that that's added pressure, yeah. right? It is. So like, how are you building community with other men mm -hmm. to be like, you know? Mm -hmm. And and I know like there's this saying right now that men yeah. are, oh no homo but yeah no homo bro but you look good. <laughs> and, it, and it's no like homo, bro, nice well, why does that something? have to be associated <laughs> yeah. with that like that's so bad because we got to protect ourselves in our culture the worst thing it is is to be gay or to be feminine so I have to protect that at all times that's worth dying for that's a flag of glory we raise without raising it willing to die for that you offend a man's yeah. manhood or pride you lose your life that way but it's so weird because it's like if you're if Men are so against like showing signs of femininity. It's almost like then, what do you really think of femininity? Mm -hmm. If you think it's that negative, well, it goes back to associating mm -hmm. it uh, feminine, like feelings with feminine, instead of saying feelings are human. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like, right. Exactly. Like not not once a once a month do women have feelings. It's like everybody has yeah, feelings. Right. Like, like men are fuck? women are not the only ones that have feelings. Yeah. Like, men are allowed to have feelings. You're allowed to cry. You're allowed to feel. You're yeah. allowed to feel hurt. So real quick, I want to go into the chat room. I see you guys in there. Uh, Kathy says, we got to start holding our homies accountable. Example, if you go to yeah. Thanksgiving and one of the little boys wants to play with the doll, let him play with the doll. Don't say wow. that's that. Say things like boys don't play with those toys. Wow. Yeah. And then we have Sophia Coleman. She says, what's sad these days is most people aren't willing to check in with their friends. People are more self-absorbed than they are aware of how wow. their friends and families are feeling. She's 18, just graduated high school. Clap it up for my... Clap it up hey. for you. Superstar for the Woo. Bay. Hey, hold on. I'm kind of... Okay, shout out. I do want to do a shout out to the Bay Area because um, I, <laughs> I go up to I travel. Say to it the one Bay. more time. I shout out to the Bay. A shout out to the Bay. Yeah. I want to go to. I want to shout out the Bay because I go to the Bay at least once a week, and I feel like everybody I talk to, from the taxi drivers to the people at the hotel to the people at the restaurants, like everybody is super conscious in like that small radius, and like there's so much traffic, and they talk about LA, but let's talk not talk about that. Like they're so super conscious, so there's something about Man. the energy in the Bay. That LA could learn from. I, I do admit that. <laughs> as far as like being politically. Oh, conscious. you're making his day. You're making his night. So I do want to say that. Because LA is about like, you know, looks and, 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 and being a certain kind of way. It's really superficial. It is a little superficial. It can be. I'm, a, I'm not going to no, deny it is. that. Like, sometimes they have vapid. It is. Like, void and, of any real. And I think it that is. the Some Bay. More than others. Right. If the Bay can like, like, 
figure it out or anybody could figure out like Man. how to heal and how to come together as community because there's so many affinity groups that I've yep. met when I've yep. traveled up north like mm -hmm. people of color affinity groups yep. men uh, men yep. affinity groups black men affinity yep. groups Latinx yep. affinity groups like just everybody come on and keep it's going like, it's a they, thousand there's so many LGBTQ yep. affinity groups and it's like affinity groups is like light groups that they're talking about mm -hmm. a subject or talking mm -hmm. about their experience mm -hmm. and that's why I'm saying like how are you Jeremy I'll tell you. bringing that so and and you mentioned here's I'm a part. Of, I'm representing the city real quick. Black and Brown Social Club. Mm -hmm. Every time a brother gets shot or killed or something tragic happens, I'm there. March for Mothers. Every woman that's ever lost a son, we join that group to support them because there's a lot of them. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. The Black Teachers Project. I'm a part of a project of only the Black teachers in the Bay coming together once a month to breathe. Yeah. Because we are drowning right now. I'm a part of a Bible men's study group. We come together and sit down once a week and cry. Because this shit is heavy in the streets. Somebody just got smoked before the actual Bible study began. Someone's mom just got kicked out of the house. She's homeless. We are suffering and we have a place to come pray. Yeah. I'm, I'm just so blessed. I would not be here if not for my community. I reflect them. Yeah. When I come out here or go to Denver or New York or New Mexico, wherever I go, I bring the bay with me. Because yeah. they have gifted me and provided enough spaces where I can be myself to feel comfortable to take this on the road. Like what we're doing over there is healing. Yeah. And I don't yeah. feel, I feel it would be a tragedy to keep that just to ourselves. Mm. So I'm going to share it with is. the world. And you have I'm going to share it with the world because I know. You have been. You have been. Facts. You have been. Facts. And that's because I've been given it. Access to that is not often. Some places, men, the whole idea of manhood is completely different. Right. Yeah. So we are trying to change the narrative. And that's what it looks like. It looks like mirror. Looks like community. Mm -hmm. And then it looks like reflection. Go out there and do the work now. Yep. Like it's one thing to say it in a room, closed door at night, right? Yeah. And amongst a group of people that feel safe. Go into a place where there is hopelessness and bring that message then. Yes. We are disciples where I yes. come from. Yes. We are willing to get Ooh. out of our comfort yes. zone and Ooh. go wherever it's needed. Yes. And shout out to the National Equity Project. They're, they are up in the Bay Area and they're doing so much and they've expanded nationally and they're yeah. doing this work with educators because mm -hmm. what they call it is mirror work, window yeah. work, mm -hmm. and then, you know, true liberation. And in order for us to heal other people, we first have to heal our own self. It's the only and way. that's where it starts. We have yeah. to heal us first and we have to start that conversation. And we have to start the conversation now because so many people are just in, in need of that conversation now. And you know what? Take 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 this home. What you don't heal you become. Mm. What you don't forgive, you become. Amen. So let's just get right to it. How many people are exactly what they are because they said they never would be it, but never forgave it. Right. We can get into a long conversation on that. But I know for me, a lot of men that don't take care of their children, they're not just not taking care of them. They never forgive their father. Right. Uh -huh. So how can you be a man if no one inside of you had forgiveness to actually forgive your own? Right. So there's a lot of brokenness that we can talk about, which is why so I came much. here. Because yeah. I know that yes. we as men have to get the conversation happening. Because yes. there's too many of us dying in silence. And I will not take these dreams to the graveyard. And we have to do it for the next one. To my men of color out there that are listening to this ra ladies' uh, night radio show, I just want to say, you know, come together. Mm -hmm. It's okay to cry. You are not less of a man. You are actually more sexy, more amazing, more intelligent. <laughs> Ooh, tell oh, tell more trust. Tell him. Hey, well, yes. And I just want to say, like, you are becoming better for your future wife, for your future mm. girlfriend, for your future kids. Your future like, self. heal yourself. Ooh. Like, whatever society, we hold you up. Women of Come color, on. we are here to support you because yeah. you know at the end of the day, we know. We us. know you are yeah. harassed at yeah. higher rates. We yeah. know you are failed at higher rates. Yeah. We know you are looked past at at higher rates. rates we get you we love you and we're here to support you but you know what don't take us for granted mm. at the end of the day we are strong women mm. we come we show up every mm. single day we come yes, for we, you. Do. we clean we go to work right. we, we forgive you we right. forgive you. we punk you we push you we <laughs> yell at you come on don't give up give us up to go to a white woman who's not going to challenge you don't do that. Major clap. At the end of the day, that's on video, right? Stand, stay there. We love you, but we wow. got to do this work together. Wow. You know, to our men of color, we got to do this work together in unison because we can conquer the world. We can change the world to be better, Ooh. to be back like as yeah. as it used that's to be. My sister. You can be where you are. Raise a glass for your sister. That's my sister. Raise a glass for that. Put the clapping noise to the future, on. To the 
So can I do one thing real quick? It's really random. You could be many things right now. Go for it. It's really random, but the way that I'm feeling right now, um, I wrote something the other day that I think I want to share with you, and I just feel like I'm comfortable enough to do that. Okay. Um, it's called I Was Raised in a House Full of Women. This is on my next book that I'm publishing in a couple weeks, and everything we said here really gives me courage to say it right now. I haven't it. said it say before it. on the Speak microphone. Up. Yes. Uh, <laughs> what's, the, what's the name of the of it? <laughs> the book. Yeah, no. Uh, well, the book and or the poem. So this book that I have on me is my second book. It's called Unshackled. This is me with poof balls or me with like, you know, ponytails. I wrote this last year when the Nazis were coming to San Francisco, and we said fuck no, and um, it spawned me to write a whole bunch of things that, as my father passed away, I realized I didn't heal. I hated my dad when he when I was young. I thought he was the worst person in the world. I called him a deadbeat. I said all kind of shit about him. And when he died, I realized, dog, this toxic masculinity is taking a toll on you. You have become him. You don't want to talk about the things you do that he did, but you hate him because you never forgave him. And I wrote this in dedication to him. But this next book is dedicated to the women in my life based off this first um, entry point. And the book that I'm going to write is going to be titled Who Will Survive in America? And I wrote it the day I saw, I started writing the day I saw the ch- the children in the caravan being pelted with tear gas. And I realized, oh, it's that time again. So this is dedicated to all the women in the room and the women in the home. This is for you. I was raised in a house full of women that were the head of the household that held the foundation together like a backbone. It is because of them I learned how to think on my own two feet. Theirs usually swollen. For working double shifts and picking up graveyard hours so I, the child they adopted, could live a normal life. I learned lessons on organized sports teams. I was raised in a house full of women that attended every soccer match I ever laced my cleats in. I sliced oranges on Saturday mornings religiously. Went bananas when I split the defense with my speed. That iced my wounds after every practice and lifted me on shoulders whenever I scored a game-winning goal in a shootout. Their goal teach me how to respond in high pressure moments yes their goal prepare Mm. a little black boy for a life of healing i was raised in a house full of women that told me i had to work twice as hard that i would not make excuses that my that my that my stutter would not be my kryptonite and although i talk faster than a moving locomotive they instill the mentality i could leave mountains with a single thought yes i was raised in a house full of women Mm. Mm-hmm. Where I was walking distance to grade school, but I got escorted on the school grounds. My guards ready to sacrifice the life at a moment's notice. If any stray bullet ever found its way in my vicinity, both Secret Service and First Ladies, our dinner table was the Oval Office where executive decisions were made every single day. Oprah, more than a woman, a symbol, a rape survivor who was fired in her mid-20s, was a living embodiment of black girl magic before the phrase was coined. I was raised in a household of women where they served first and they ate last. Ooh. That loved Ooh. hard. Yes. That loved hard and prayed on knees even harder. Where there were martial law and restorative justice. Where I saw the gospel every day of the week, not just Sundays in service. Where posters of Jerry Rice and Joe Montana hung off the walls like banners. But I, the biggest fan, was not allowed to set a foot on the field. Mm. I had a responsibility, they said, to change the world with my mind. So I made out under the bleachers. I was raised in a house (laughs) full of women where wooden cabinets held more secrets than Tupperware. And if you dusted for prints, you'd find no matter how organized those shelves were, the founding matters were messy. Where my grandmother was subject to the hands of abuse by her husband, risking her life for children that were told they weren't worth shit. That were lined up on Friday nights like drill camp and brainwashing and thinking that nobody would pay a nickel for them. My grandfather, who never heard a hair on my head, was a veteran. Like his father before him, like my father, like my cousin, like my uncle. I come from a long line of men who serve our flag and leave their honor on the battlefield. No wonder I've had a hard time following authority. I was raised in a household of women, but they were the ones with the purple hearts. I stood down to their command. Now I stand up for their rights. I salute them for every sacrifice I never saw. 
How they managed to put food on the table, compassion in my broken heart, and a young boy who had no business making it past 18 through college. I was raised in a house full of women where I learned to embrace my masculine and my feminine, but I can lead with my ladder. Where fellowship was the only thing that kept me out of the footsteps of my father, out of contact from rival gangs, out of a book full of excuses, and away from the fucking myth that women need a man to survive. Ooh, Thank yes. you. Yes, hello. You got me. You got me, y'all. Oh. I'm done. I'm My I'm God! Tapped out. I tapped out. You I'm guys, he, I just want to let you guys know he is going to be performing more tomorrow night in Inglewood. We will post the address. Um, he's gonna po- he's gonna be performing a lot of his work from his new book and maybe his old one. Um, Jeremy, that was incredible. That was powerful. That man. was powerful. I was raised in a house full of matter, women. Y'all. You were Words raised matter. in a house full of women, and that Come was on. amazing. And they were amazing, powerful, intelligent, beautiful women, and they did a great job. Thank you. you Amazing know? job. Yeah, good for you. Amazing job. Uh, Myra, I know you, I don't I want to put you too much on the spot, but you, you do have a son, mm-hmm. um, and you are doing a phenomenal job. He is a sweet young man, smart kid, respect. Yes. What is it that, look, I know, I know. Come I know. on, come on. Yes. Yes. We got yes. Tears. yes. So I teared up. When I he know. Because, you know, he's saying um, Say he it. was walked and escorted to school and. You know, it just reminds me of how much I protect my little, my kids. Um, I don't, it's just inspiring because when I when I hear you speak that way, I see my son. Mm. I see what he can potentially mm. be and how strong he can be. You know, mm. and he is. He's such a strong kid. So it just. It's heavy. <laughs> it's real <laughs> heavy. That, clap. that was weird. That clap was. I wasn't even over clap. there. <laughs> so um, I teared up a little bit because I felt it. You know what I mean? And as a mom, being a strong mom and and a strong woman, mm. period. Um, you you take so much. You make no excuses. You mm. do what you have to do. I work. I do. I do whatever I need to do. There's no. There's no like, oh, I work harder than this mom. I do this more than that mom. It, it, to me, it's like you get your shit done mm-hmm. no matter what, regardless, mm-hmm. you know? So when, when you were talking, just kind of felt, I felt it. If it, I personalized it. I, I, I kind of just related it to, to me having, you know, my little boy. Yeah, because he's such a strong, and and he supports women. He's he's so like he's such a cool kid. He takes care of his sister. He takes, he takes care of his sister. He's he, a change. You know, and sometimes we, you know, sometimes we tell him like, <sighs> yesterday for example, we um, he got so upset because he was on he 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 has a, an Instagram now and and he loves <laughs> Snapchat and and he's on Snapchat with his friends. And we pulled his phone from him, and he got so emotional, like so emotional, to the point where we said something like, oh, you know, um, I think he started crying. We're like, man, boy, stop being so soft. Wow. We told him no. that, right? Yeah. No. So that, so that it exactly, happens. It happens. We've nah. all it does, we've all done it. It. Does, it does happen. But who corrected it? But but see, then we went into the conversation to where, hey, if this, so we, you know, it. You, you can't really take back what you say. You can just, all you can do is try to explain it a different way. Yes. You know, so yes. basically, if there's something like a phone or Snapchat that's making you react this way and making you have these emotions, then we need to protect you from it. So we need yeah. to take it away from you or we need to discipline you yeah. from it in a way where you don't have to have these negative emotions because it, it, it's, it's, you know, it, you're too young to be, to, to have that, you know, in your life. Yeah. I mean, he, he just shouldn't be experiencing yeah. that type of emotion and that type of pain. pain. It seemed like pain to me over a phone or over right. Snapchat. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's right. taking your focus from things yeah. that are more important right. than, you know, technology. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So he put too much passion into that. So yeah. we kind of, you know, we're going to need to steer you away from it and protect you from it because as your parents, we know, you yes. know, we want the best for you. And if right. that's bringing that type of, you know, negativity don't out of you, it. then we don't need it. We don't need it yeah. for you. Yeah. So can yeah, we, but can you, you know, for her, for yes, her let's do it. Let's that's, do it. Let's you. put that thing on for yeah, her. Now that's I, worth I, it. I mean, I'm sweating, tearing. <laughs> <laughs> yo, I got hella people texting me like, "Yo, what is in this room?" I wish I people, people in the Bay Area the are very honest. Here is yeah. so good. I mean, it's we're here energy. every Friday night uh, at the Good News Radio Station on the Good News Radio app at seven thirty. We usually do an hour, which would be done by now. But you know, because I'm feeling this, come on, I think it's really important. Come on, I'm extending the show. 
I'm extending the show today. Executive decision. I made that. Executive decision. Why? Because it's my motherfucking show. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. I need more sound effects. I really do. I want to do, like, the shots fired. No, I really am so excited that, like you said earlier, Jeremy, everything... Everybody that's supposed to be here is here. Everybody mm-hmm. every at the timing, you know what I mean? And I'm so excited that I have my sister here, my amazing friend Myra, my yeah. prima over here, mm-hmm. Madi, my amazing friend and BFF sister um, and producer, Kosi. She is awesome. And I have you. But you know what? Before I even cut you off, I just want to say that you noticed you mentioned like six women in here, right? Yes. That is how the future looks. Yeah. Women of color lead this motherfucker. That's and right. I know my place. That's right. I just I'm so grateful to be amongst this because yeah. in the Bay Area we see this. The Panthers were predominantly women. Name me a revolution that was not led mm. by women on weight. Ooh, damn. damn. Say it again. Name me a revolution that was not <laughs> led by women on weight. Oh wait. Oh right. wait. Because right. it wasn't a revolution because it didn't happen. But look, that's why I wanted to bring it up because the whole toxic masculinity, I know toxic is being thrown out there a lot. But to me, it's like, I want to help you guys. I want to heal you. I want to be, what can I do for you, young men? What can I do for you, boys? What can I do for you, men out there? Like, I want to help you. Oh, <laughs> shout out to Lauren, uh, who just had Laurel me. Justice. Jeremy, extend the show. Come on. So very From good. From Denver. That's our difference. Denver. Denver. Shout out to Denver. Shout out to everybody that, met, like, just tunes in every week, Friday night. Ladies Night Radio. I know it's Ladies Night. But I want to give people the idea. This is what Ladies Night is. We talk about real stuff like this. There. We talk about these issues. We talk mm-hmm. about how can we help our brothers? How can we help our sisters? How can we help our family, our friends, our coworkers? Shout out to Sophia. She's just text Jeremy. Yup, it's lit. Love listening to the facts of today. Read another poem. It's hella lit. <laughs> she extended the show because you lit up that room with these strong yeah. women. Strong women. Clap it up for the right. strong women. Yo, put the clap on. Right. Yo, you like fuck. Right. He yeah, likes, he likes the sound effects. I love it. I'm a visual. I do all kind of artists, so things get to me. Ah, strong men recognize strong women. Man. Strong women recognize strong men. We are not here to compete. We are Woo. here to work together and create a the better, best and a better future for our youth and yeah. our. You know what I mean? Everything, everything. Um, and I was. It's so funny because I was sharing the story with Jeremy as we were driving over here of how the moment that you got accepted to Santa Barbara yeah. and my dad and my yeah. uncles had a meeting. About if they were gonna let yeah, you go talk. to Santa Barbara. Ooh. Yeah. You heard that right. <laughs> my dad had a meeting. Oh man, I gotta pour myself a drink. With his uh, brother. On, I'll pour it for you. What you wanna drink? <laughs> a bartender. My sister got accepted to Santa Barbara, and my dad mm. and his older brother mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. his older brother's son got all together, and I think Tony, I'm not sure, got together to decide. If they were going to allow my sister to go to Santa Barbara. This is what I'm talking about. And I'm not saying it's bad. It's just the way we were raised. It's just the culture. And I get it. And I also shared the story with him. How growing up, we never said I love you together to each other. We Heavy. never hugged yeah. each other. Heavy. Come we on. We never Come on. expressed ourselves like that. Our ways of expressing uh, a love was clowning on each other. Come talking on. shit. Like, oh, you know. Come on. And that was our way of showing Come affection. Come on. But we never said I love you. Not until we went off to college. We both joined a sorority, and that's how the sorority greeted each other. And we talked about it. We're like, this is so weird. The fact that we can hug these strangers, but we can't hug our own family, our own, our own family. brothers wow. and yes. sisters, wow. and say I love you. Wow. Yeah. Anne so, is the one that decided to have that conversation and say, we're going to change this. We As are going to change this. And I was 18, 19 years old, and I said, you know what? At the end of the day, I'm so glad they said yes. Yeah. You know, it was all my dad and his and his family. And you know what? Shout out to my cousin, Fenny. I don't know if she's listening. Hey, yeah, Fenny. But it was Fenny who came over and told my dad. Literally, she was the only woman at the conversation. And I remember her vividly because I was, I was always nosy. I was always all up in the mix. And um, my dad was like, you know, I can't. Like, there's, like, no women, blah, blah, blah. And, like, he's like, I love Anna. But, like, you know, this other stuff happened or whatever. So it was Fenny that said, look. Theo, she worked hard for this. She has put 
like all her energy. You have put every expectation and she has met it. And if you don't let her go, she's going to resent you for the rest of her life. I know that personally and I think that you should let her go. And if she fails, she fails, but at least you let her go. You let her go. And yes, she'll be the first, but she is definitely not going to be the last. Just let her go. And I, I just... I shout out to my woman cousin who was there because it wasn't for her. And I think at 18, oh, I was yeah. like, I'm doing it for her and I'm doing it for everybody else who's younger than me. And I was like, I'm going to do it. And my dad, the day before I left college, he was like, you know, you represent all the women in our family. And mm. I was like, fuck, I'm 18. <laughs> That's really heavy. That is. And he said, like, if you fail every... Every dad is not going to let their daughter go to college. Every dad oh, wow. is not going to, uh, you know, think that college is for their girls. And it was pressure. Yeah. And I, I left to college and I was like, fuck, I need to do this. And I went and I remember like, I was like, how am I going to pay it forward? How am I going to do it? And I remember like being so hard on Jackie, being hard on my other nieces and I'm being hard on my sisters and being like, I need to do this. But he being hard on myself and feeling like, I sh I don't belong here. I'm not enough. And like, just yes. finished listening to Michelle Obama's book, and I'm like, oh my god! Every woman goes through that. Every woman goes through something thinking that they're not enough. And at the end of the day, like my dad was just afraid for him, his legacy, yes. and for our for me as a woman, right? Because yeah. he knows that we're vulnerable. We're vulnerable. He didn't yeah. want me to fail. So I mean, he wasn't trying to be a machis yeah. machis or diner. say that you couldn't and yeah and he let my brother go with with less conversation but at the end of the day like i'm so glad and i feel so grateful that i made it and i think like i thank god for that but at the end of the day i'm like how do i lift up other women and that's like my life's work to lift up other women and men yeah because at the end of the day like my dad was navigating in a society where he was feeling pressured and he was feeling hurt And we can do it. So if you're out there and you're listening and you think that you can't mm -hmm. meet that goal mm -hmm. or someone told it. you that you couldn't do it or someone told you that maybe you, you're doubting yourself, you can do it. Put your mind oh. to it. Find yes. the resources. Find yeah. the help. You got this. Yes. You right there. I'm looking at you. Get up. Look in the mirror and say, you can do it. I can do it. I am enough. I am smart. I can work mm -hmm. hard. Yeah. And if one person at a time we can make the society better yeah. we can make this world a better place yeah. for all of us but you like but it has to start with wow. yourself and the your mirror. family yeah let's give yeah. her a round of applause yeah. for that story yeah give her, hit the button i want her autograph what yeah. the fuck you didn't tell me who i was sitting next to that's, she's the star of the show that's my sister god damn that's, that's my, my sister that's my friend hey, that's my friend i love you <laughs> i don't even know you but i'm she's willing amazing. to take a bullet love for you, you. She, love to you shout too. out to she anna so she just awesome. she's shit she ran a school so for many perfect. years she was a principal for many years and she just got promoted to chief of staff so she is running yes. out other schools i'm so proud of her Coming as her that. little sis more, more yes more more. More. take all that love thank you shout out to everybody in this room Wait. because you because they can't hear you you have to wait till it sounds I know we can hear each other, but they can't. Go ahead. What were you saying? I said shout out to everybody in this room because everybody here has gone yes. through their own journey and their own challenges yeah. and have made it. <laughs> yes! But I want to go back real quick. Yes! That, that you are the one that kind of was like, we need to change this, and I was on board. And we decided, as we got older, we didn't grow up with I love yous and hugs because they're, they're in the inbox. We're not the only family that, that's mm -hmm. saying that. Yeah. Sure. There's people Same. in there that's X-Squad kicking it with Kesey and then, like, Sophia. Like, a lot of them and Anna, they're all in there saying that they grew up the same way. They didn't get I love yous. They didn't get hugs. Come on. So we decided as women, as we uh, got older, come on. we were 18, 19, we said, This isn't right. Let's change it. You know it what? was weird at first. I'm not going to lie. When I first told my dad and my mom, I love you. Come on. It was the weirdest feeling. Bet. Yeah. And now that's all I say to them. Huh? Like, I love you, mom. Huh? Like, you know? Hey, you guys grew up with a large, close family. Yes. Some people didn't have that luxury. Like, Facts. Hey, you know I mean? Amira. So a lot of that is just rooted deep pain that and they don't know how to express emotion or express love because they didn't learn it they didn't come from it I we mean, just like, don't want to be rejected too yeah, right it's like that want, fear you of you like wanna, exactly exactly you don't want to be rejected yeah. and sometimes you know you're just a little insecure about how you feel with yourself that you don't know how to express it to others try it first maida i love you 
Aww. I love you too. <laughs> too. I love you. Yo. I love everybody. Start here. it. Yeah. Exactly. Just say I love you. And now it's gotten <laughs> yeah. to the point where we say I love you all, all the, time. the time. All the time. Like, I, like I, love you, all the time. I love you, sis. I love you, bro. Come on. Life is too yeah. short say it. to not express how you say feel. Say it to but your I'm loved ones. I love you. I know it's going to be weird at first, but trust me, yeah. it's going to yes. feel so much better after, Insti- and you're going to make their day. Instill it in your children. Yes. Come on. Teach your children to love. Love is good. Tell your I sons. Think, I think that that's, I, I do want to say like You're some people that it's that fear of saying I love you. And again, it goes back to the piece of like rejection because what people are saying yeah. when they say I love you is that I want you to love me back. Mm. Not, always. not always, not but always, but like when it comes know. to family I, right? or I don't mean like uh, your significant other. No, the love. The love. I'm but just saying know. like as far as family is concerned, yeah. especially no, with kids, I, right? Kids. I get it. That's when true. we start, first started saying it with to our brothers, they're like, why are you being weird? Yeah. Stop saying <laughs> I love you. And now it's like, I don't really care. Yeah, and exactly. I would tell them, I don't care. I still love you. I love mm-hmm. you and I know you love me. Yeah. And we talk about that all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. And right. then that just goes back to just being sure about how you Confident, feel. Confident, yes. Just, be, just knowing you. You know what I mean? <laughs> so because you don't need to have validation from someone else. You don't need anyone else to tell you they love you back to know that you truly have love in Come your on. heart for people. Right. Yeah. I, I I am just I'm gonna just say thank you, mm-hmm. and and I got a really just one thing, and I'll shut I'll shut the fuck up. Are you gonna read us another poem? <laughs> this poem is dedicated to brown girls. I'm around them, and I promise you, you I'm might, gonna time you. You time me. I'm I don't do what you need to do with the timer. It's gonna hit who it's gonna hit. <laughs> Feel me? And I'm looking at the people that's gonna hit. So my student Sophia, who's been on me like. Who, by the way, just graduated high school. Uh, brag moment. Young Latina, this thing, the strong Latinas. Speak on it. Is Show changing it. her entire mind state. So while I have her here, I want to dedicate this poem to her. Ooh, Sophia. Mija. Mija. That's what the title is. You have a story. It is written all over you. Your brown skin, the latest fashion trend, is not a result of cosmetic surgery. Your golden bronze requires no Maybelline to shine any brighter than it already does. That coat passed down generation of a generation of a generation has been worn with the pride of the people who, like the land they inherited, was ripe with ancestral knowledge, whose resilience knows no border. Mm. Deeply sewn in the fabric of your being, there is a warrior. Translation, you have greatness in your DNA. Big Native was not a card you had a hand in, but you have played with a poker face that has left opponents constantly asking you to cater to the discomfort. Smile more. You should smile more. Look less angry. Look less angry. Cut in between social norms and gender roles. Your next move, always the greatest concern. If the Spanish of your tongue alarms the monolingual, do not cover your accent in apologies. Your lo siento, no lo siento. Let your rolling R's flow like a raging river. Remind them bilingualism is a superpower. You can raise the hairs and the backs of necks and every conjugated verb that leaves the surface of your beautiful lips is a reminder to the elite that hate the use of native tongue. This country was built off our backs. Mm. The extreme heights of your potential combined with your rising voice of your generation has those in power on the ropes. They want to separate our families because the ground beneath them is shrinking. Listen, the homo sapiens are running. They are aware the power is dying off. And in their wake, you will take their place at the top of the totem. And that is the lasso of truth. Mm -hmm. Although DC Comics never got the wave, you are more Wonder Women than damsel in distress. And the synonym for Chinkonga is fearless. And that's what you are. Did you know the blood of the Aztecs coursed through your veins? You are a mean, bleeding Latina. Your train of thought has indigenous origins. You are a departure from the norm. The only thing ordinary about you is how you're able to chameleon for people. Blend in to protect your identity. Mm-hmm. When in reality, Mujeres Fuerte have always started revolutions by solely existing. It is a fiesta from the cradle to the quinceanera. And every moment after you live the vida loca, look. Your Frida flower crown and your big hoop earrings are the only armor you need. Mm. History does not honor you the way you deserve. Yes. You have a story. Write your name amongst the stars where they rightfully belong, Miha. Ooh, yes. Oh, yes. Poet, poet, poet. Come on. I just want to tell y'all how grateful I am to see this. 
Magic. That was powerful. You are powerful. I'm surrounded by that. I wrote that for y'all. I didn't know I was going to see a bunch of them in the same room, but there you go. Like, plot twist. No, I wrote it. I, I think see it's, it. It's pretty awesome that you're doing that because you're inspiring young Latina girls. And um, I mean, there's a message. You, know? you are more than your pretty face, mm-hmm. than that Instagram it's like you picture. Said, you're to touch someone. Yeah. You are intelligent. You are amazing. You have wonderful talents. Make a vision board. Get every goal that you write. Write your goals down, girlfriend. You got this. You know why? Because in here alone, you have a women, a room full of mothers <clears throat> who have made it and raised amazing children. Mm-hmm. You have women who have fought, who have failed and gotten up every time. Mm-hmm. You have women that have had every single challenge mm-hmm. put in front of them mm-hmm. and still came back you have women who don't even have all five of their senses mm. but keep pushing uh. through you have women who are said this is my dream and have worked hard to, to get it you can do it come on whatever you want come on you want to achieve you yeah. got this Woo! the only person standing in your it's way you. is you mm. that's it look in the mirror Woo! and say you got this i am enough you Fucking got, got this! this. Put the clap on! Put the clap on! Put the yes! Oh, this is the best show. <laughs> it better be. We've extended um, the show. We've extended the show so far. I gotta look at the what? comments. There just be too many comments. What? Yeah, yeah, let's go in the comment what box, the comment? y'all. What are y'all? What the comments say? looking like. Let's go let's into see. the comment I know, box. My phone shout looking out, like. Shout out to my sister Maria hey. who just walked in. She taught me how to fight, so don't mess with me because I will punch you. <laughs> She taught me that. You are She's hilarious. She's your shoulders But off. I'm not She's a fighter. Proud. I'm a lover. I'm not a fighter. That's She'll right. She'll hug you so tight you'll pass out. <laughs> Man, that's my Leaves sister. Leaves no marks. <laughs> I'll talk your ear off. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, sh- really quick in the chat box we got Sharika shout out to Sharika she is from the Bay but she lives in LA now but she does go for her Warriors come on and her 49ers huh? you sh- sh- huh? Sharika you gotta huh? see Jeremy's jacket he got the classic the gold, old school uh, gold 49ers on my jacket. wrist she goes gold on my neck she goes this show got me praying that retain half of these gems y'all dropping for my future child oh. you know what exactly Exactly. Clap it up. Clap it up. Clap it out. Clap it up. Another one. Another one. Another one. Um, So I see a lot of you guys say the same thing, like your parents never gave you a hug or a kiss. Nope. You know what? And just let me know. I'm giving you a virtual hug right now. I'm giving you a hug. I'm giving you a kiss on the cheek. I'm telling you, you are enough. And just make sure you can change that. You can change that and and, and start hugging your parents. Tell them you love them. It's not too late. We changed it, and now you can too. You know, it's never too late. It's Um, just like you can get whatever you want. If what you want is love, get it. Exactly. Sophia says, exactly, I will do that with my family because I go to my friend's house and see their parents do it with kids, and I babysit, and I see their parents do the same. It hurts me to see it, but there's always room for change in the next generation. Sophia, I don't know you, girl, but I am so proud of you. Sophia is the future. What she just say right there? What she say right there? The last text she just sent me. Oh, she just texted Jeremy. No, thank you, man. I love that poem. Hearing me, hearing me makes me so happy. I read it every day in the morning and even to myself in the mirror. Sophia, happy, man. Jeremy speaks very highly of you, and you seem to have your head on your shoulders. You are in the right direction. If you need more females she does. in your life, she does. Listen to us here in the ladies right now. You can f- find me on Instagram. Have Jeremy give you my number. Run it. I will be your female mentor. You can Come be a on, part of the female it, group. Yeah. This is what Ladies Night Radio is about. Uh, women empowering women, helping each other. And I am here for it. If you need more women in your life, guess what? I'm here. My sisters are here. My girls are here. We are all for it. We yes. love bringing new women and just empowering them. And you, my dear, have a light in you. And I can see it just by the way that you talk, just by the way that you're you're expressing yourself. I'm really proud of you. So, you know, shout out to you. You just got an amazing poem, uh, spoken word, dedicated to you by the yes. one and only Jeremy Michael He's Vasquez. Great. He's a star. He's a star. He's a star, yo. Wow. This is why I'm so excited. Like, I literally <laughs> am so happy he's here. I that he's dropping gems. I mean, I've been... <laughs> He I'm is. chilling, bro. Yeah, to God the glory, man. Where are you yo, performing at tomorrow? So I'm mentor. performing. Tell them where you're performing tomorrow. Yo, thank you for that, yo. Um, two, th- three, three things. That Hold are, on. 
Hold on. Three things. Three things. <laughs> she said, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let's get you so, on the floor. Do it. So Go. three things. Now, where the are you reason, performing at tomorrow? Here's the bigger, important, more question. Not where I'm performing, why I'm performing. Okay. My why, I grew up with a t- t- stutter. That had a impact on me. If anyone has a learning disability, you are not alone. I know the suffering. I know it so well. I slept with more suffering than I have glory. I've been laughed at because of my stutter more than I've been celebrated. So I'm coming back from my time. My father was incarcerated. I grew up a child of an incarcerated parent. I lied every day when someone asked me, what do your parents do? I had to lie to protect my honor. And the last thing I did is my grandma was an immigrant. Did you not think at some point it would all come together? The pain would create the platform? Yes, Did you not it. think I would rise from the concrete? Rise. And when I came from the concrete, I would come with conviction. I came from my people. Say I want the rose garden wherever That's I it. go. Because we belong to one another. I belong to my people. This is for everybody, maybe. If you get it, you did it. I don't get it. White people on the phone, if you get it, you get it. I don't really care. I came for my people. I am Afro-Latino. So the message yes. is clear. If they know the concrete, I came from the concrete. I go to the juvenile halls, the classrooms. Wherever I'm sent, I go to create a rose garden. Mm. And this is my message that you are not alone. Say your message. You are not alone. You are and not I am alone. so Thankful that we cross paths at this time. What you do with it is up to you. But we are exactly where we need to be. Mm. And at this moment, understand, I came for you. Mm. Thank you. Yes. 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 Drop that mic. Drop it. You guys. Throws love everywhere. You guys, I'm so excited. And um, I'm so sad to announce. We have to end the show. But Yes, our longest one. We got to end it. Jackie, Madi, you're doing a great job. Jack, Yay. Mysterious Jack, Madi on the mic. Yes. If you are not listening, you better listen. Yes. Follow them on Facts. Instagram, Mysterious Jack, Madi on the mic. I mean, they are amazing. Thank the you, girls' sis. night. And I just want to say that if whatever you're thinking, whatever your goal is, first of all, check your thinking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you are in the deficit yeah, thinking, be in the asset self-talk. thinking. If you check it, because you are in control of that. You can do it. You are amazing. Yeah. And my sister is following her passion, and I'm so proud yeah. of you her. You inspire me, sister. And yeah. she you is a beautiful me. soul. Beautiful. Thank yeah. you. Madi beautiful. on the mic is funny Magic. and intelligent Magic. and hardworking, <laughs> and I can't Woo. ask for a better family member. Come on. Myra right here. She is a great mother. Yes. Uh, she is amazing. Yes. She's yes. a hard worker. Come, she on. Has Come on. Come on. Shout out to my sister who just got here, a great mother, a yeah, hard worker, worker dignity, the most, humor. She's like Tommy she's had raising, a fight, she's style, raising, grace, r- spiritual as yeah. heck, this a as Cosi, Maria. she's like four senses and amazing and hardworking, and Cosi, you don't let anything stand in no, your way, no, one and thing. that everybody should take notes of that, and I just want to say, woman, if you think you can, you can. And Ooh. you want to write it down, Tell write it em. down. You can do this. That's my sister. Real quick, wow. um, Jeremy just showed me a text from Karen Queen. She goes, uh, needed to hear all of that. Yay. So shout out to all of them. I'm glad so y'all These are my students. Away. I'm going to see her on Monday at Santa so Ana High School, man. Hey. Hi, Karen. I come out here. Yo, yeah. my Discussion points, me, y'all. Bro. Bring this I stuff hard up. To find. To I'm I in want hood, all man. of your, your female streets, friends bro. and I'm people. I'm in the streets. I'm in the hood. I'm where the struggle's at. And the women of color, I'm behind the fuck you. I'm now. You go ahead. Ooh, follow us at Ladies Night Radio Show on Instagram. We do a lot of shows like these. We have a lot of amazing people like Jeremy on the show. And we just are about empowering women. We don't bash men. We yeah. want to help them too, but we are empowering women. So follow us at Ladies Night Radio Show on Instagram. But uh, real quick, we're going to go into our next segment of the day, of the night. And that's Spanish word of the day. Go ahead, Mighty. Let them know what's good. Ooh, all right. So it was a really powerful segment of ours. So I'm just going to keep it really light. Um, the word of the week is paz, which is peace. And it's spelled P-A-Z, paz. Um, and really, it's just when you know somebody's going through it, you can let them know. Um, que tengas paz, que estés en paz. Yo siento paz. So be at peace. You are at peace. I am at peace. And just really take that time and reflect and just know that you are enough, you are worth it, you are loved, and you belong no matter what. Yes, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, We do it every week, Spanish Word of the Day, and today was bus, and I love that. 
Um, another message from Sophia. She says to Jeremy, I love hearing this man. Latina power is strong within. That's right. This is a Latina show. But actually, it's just a show for women. Not just Latinos, but there's most of us here. But who's are. the host? I'm the host. And what are Jackie, you? And what are you? Jackie. Come on, then. <laughs> But Don't you shy away from that. But I have, have a lot of supporters. Yes. You know, and they're from every background. Yes. And I disagree. Yeah. No, but no, still. No, I'm, nah. I'm, I'm all for women. Like, that's not my passion. Women is my passion. You guys have to understand, like, I want women to come together. I want to stop the whole mean girls. I want to just us to work and collab. You know how much we can do for this world? We take over, yo. We're, we're going to take over. You are. We are taking over. Jackie, this is why you're fucking amazing. Come on. <laughs> Put the clap on. good energy. Put the clap on. You, you, make, clap on. you make people feel like they can be a part of something. I and love my sister, Jackie. Pour I mean, she's my little yeah. sister, yes. but she's awesome. Yes. She is positive. She is hardworking. She is amazing. And she is a beautiful soul. I appreciate she is beautiful. You. She is intelligent. She is inspiring. She is an example. Today we went to a school for the kids. I wish you could. Oh, you leave in. Yeah. Yes. Oh, All damn. right. We went to a full school for the kids, and what? We went to a full school for the kids, and they ran up to her. They were like, "Oh my God." Miss Jackie, they, they were on her because she's worth being on. She is exactly what I needed, what they need. This world needs more hers, and there is a room full of her right now. Strong women of color are not stepping up to the point and saying, well, this is who I am. Like, I need you to say, like, yo, I'm a strong, bleeding Latina. It means oh, the world to a listener when they hear that their story is reflected in your voice. Yeah. And that's why I'm like, no, no, you're not just a woman. You're not. I'm sorry. You are a Latina. You Thank need to you. say that with pride. And I do. Wear that in the same badge that ordinary white men walk around with. Because they don't do shit with their privilege except be average. Yes, and every yes, woman of color I yes. know has to be exceptional. So say that shit from the mountaintop because you need to be there. I love that. And we will you tell you. Amazing. You are amazing. Thank you. Thank so you. I'm yes, done. Jackie. <laughs> done. Done. No, I really do. I'm very thankful that you guys are here. I literally am living one of my dreams. Um, and one of my main things that I want, I've always wanted to have a radio show. And I didn't get hired by the radio shows here in L.A., but it's okay. Because you know what? Keith and I, we built this radio station, and we decided to have our own radio shows. And guess what? Now I'm living one of my dreams. I made it happen, and I get it. But I also wanted to have this dream because I feel like we need a platform. I want to have a platform for women. And this is what the show's about. I know it's called Ladies Night Radio and people have the con the idea that Ladies Night is just partying and going out and, and, and stuff. And sometimes it is, but sometimes it's this. This these Come conversations. On. And I'm here to support yes. women and just know if you don't have a group of women, this is your new group. Join us. We are for you. We are here for you. And we will fight for you. So I'm going to go quick into the um, chat room because I see a lot of you guys in there. <laughs> it's that a lit, bro. It is lit. Anna Martinez. Uh, she went to high school with us. And she almost got my sister in trouble. With okay, us. Anna. No, no, no. We can't tell the story okay, today. Next time. Another next night. time. Next time. But next she time. says, Jack, you tell rock. the story next Anna, time. Anna, I see you. Thank you always for supporting us. I love you and I Anna, appreciate you. Anna, you're the fucking bomb. Let's you go. are a Kath strong, amazing woman. Kathy Lee. I love the possibility. Positivity here. Keep it up. Thank you, Kathy. I Kathy, really appreciate that. you are that. the bomb. You're always on. Always. X Squad's kicking it with Kesey. Uh, big ups, good news, respect. Thank you so much. We built this from the bottom up, and we are here in the studio in Culver City, California. Uh, great job, ladies. I'll be back. Thank you so much. Um, and then Sophia goes, man, I love this. This vibe is amazing. Uh, thank you so much to everybody. Man. And Sophia says, damn right, he's like a father figure and wrote exactly wow. what I stand for. Wow. So she's giving you a lot of love on that last poem of Miha. And like I said, if you guys are in the L.A. area, come yeah. out to Inglewood. Come see him perform. He's going to perform a lot more stuff from his new yeah. book tomorrow. And it's going to be amazing. He, this guy right here, yo. he is the awesome. I asked God, yo. I, he is I'm, the truth. I'm hella, he is. I'm, I'm hella, I got hella, um, I'm hella like spiritual, B. I got brujas I pray with and play cards with <laughs> straight up because I love my brujas with all my heart. As you should. They tried to burn us and they couldn't. Um, I love my ancestors. I love my God. But you know what I really love is the fact that I have one more opportunity. That's right. I wasn't promised. If you knew my story, I gave you a little background, man. The levels of incarceration I come from, the levels of toxic masculinity that I come from, yo, I could be a very different person right now. And I'm aware of all the struggles that I've had to deal with. Like, 
every time that someone has told me, oh, well, that's not going to be you. You don't look like this. You don't fit the description. Like, I have suffered most of my life. Yeah. Mm. I have suffered most of my 30 years have been in pain. Yeah. I am taking back power. And as I take back that power, take it. I want to be very intentional that this is not something I take lightly. Mm. I am so thankful for you, for everyone in this room, for giving us a space because we need it. We are suffering right now. Yes. We are suffering so badly. Yeah. And no one's talking about the pain that we go through. Right. But we did it tonight. Yes, we did, honey. Yes, and we did. Felt so beautiful. It did. And I felt so honored to be here tonight. And like, I don't really know what else to say, but like, thank God. And whoever you believe in, thank that individual. Thank yourself. Thank your mama for <laughs> carrying you. Thank the stars that look back at you and reflect your greatness. But more importantly, as an artist, as a poet, as an educator, I want to thank us for being here together. Yes. We could be anywhere, but we chose to come here tonight, and somebody is going to need this message. You were created to help somebody in this world, and I hope they heard tonight. Mm. And if they don't wake up tomorrow with the same intentionality and go find them, because they're still looking for you. Ooh, tell them. They're still looking for you. So don't be lukewarm and think your life doesn't matter or you can sleep in because you can't. You have a duty. You belong to your people. We get there because we come together. There is no such thing as I did it on my own. You didn't. You did it because someone believed in you and someone poured into you. And the people that pour into you are the ones that are going to be with you at the very end. And I am so thankful that I can say it with my chest and I can say it with conviction. Say it with your chest. And I know that as a boy listening tonight who was like, oh, man, I needed to hear that. And as a queen listening tonight who was reflected of the glory to my beautiful queens in this room, as a man of color, I say I stand behind you. Mm. You lead. I follow. I will go anywhere you yes. go. Ooh, period. Yes. 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 Woo. Let me go ahead and get into the sound effects. Signing off. Sign off. Let's do it. That's We're ending it. the show. Jeremy, Jeremy, real quick, give your Instagram for anybody who wants to follow you <laughs> and your journey. <gasps> Dog. Your, your website. Find me in the streets. I'm not Kim Kardashian. Um, I'm not one of these celebrities you find on Instagram. You find me in the streets, bro. Come out to the city. Come to Oakland. Come to the town. Have some town business. Hmm? All right. How about you come to the places that you don't want to talk about? Hmm? How about you get off of your social media and come find me where the struggle's at? How about that? Okay. Listen, I, oh. you can find me on Instagram, Mamijador, M-A-M-I-E-J-A-D-O-R-E, which translates into grandmother, I adore you. She raised me. Hercules is my forearm. I praise the woman that did this for me. But come meet me where I'm at. Come to Tijuana and come in those little camps with youth that are incarcerated, that are waiting for their asylum. Come out and be a part of the struggle. Don't just follow me on Instagram. Come into the streets. Come to Santa Ana High School where they throw taco shells on students from the top level of the football games and chant, go back to Mexico, build a wall, get out of your comfort zone, and come meet us where the struggle's at. There's a revolution happening right now, bro. Where you at? Right. When you was reading about the Nazis, we here now. When you see that little movie about Jennifer Lawrence being a mockingbird, we here now. <laughs> Don't just talk about this. Don't be an activist at the armrest. Come in the streets and meet us where we at. We out here every day. That's right. Marching for our rights. Right. Marching for our freedom. People are getting pelted right now at the border. A child just died who was seven years old with no food, with no with no water. We're talking about this Bible. You want to celebrate Christmas? Take a tree down. You don't really celebrate Christmas. You are a hypocrite. Jesus was a refugee. There are refugees at the border. Where you at with that? Hmm? These refugees clean your house, start your clothes, you sit back at our backs, privileging, and you want to talk about us not being here illegally? There is no such thing as a legal person, bro. Tell them. We got no aliens, bro. Hey, we human. Jeremy. So fix the facts and come meet me in the streets, not on a social media site, because I'm willing to die for this shit, bro. Hey. And I'm not here just to flex on a fucking radio show. Come find me in my city or the bay. 
Take a breather. Take a breather. Take a breather. <laughs> Woo! Jeremy, I mean, Take your passion is amazing. I'm with the shit. I'm with the shit. I know. If I get assassinated yeah. tomorrow, so we can be feel it. it. We can so feel be it. it. My daughter, no, look at, look at her. Living her Ooh. best life, beautiful, happy. Not listening to gender norms, society norms. I will not be con- I will not be controlled. I'm not cross my legs. I will not sit down quietly. I will not sit here and not be afraid of being messy. I will live outside the lines. My daddy is a fucking gangster. I'm a fucking gangster. I'ma say what I say. You can label me however you want to label me. And that's how the change happens, man. The change Yeah, man. We gotta wrap it up. We gotta wrap it up. Homie, I know I feel man, I'm you. done. I'm just I know. I'm ready I know. for the shit. Let me end real quick. Donald Trump. Yo, Donald Trump, one more thing. Yo, bruh. Say it. I need you to do me one solid. Let my people go. Mm. There we go. And we should end this with the quote of the day. The quote of the day. All right. Absolutely. Right. I like to end that every show awesome. with the a quote. Lot of passion. That was a passion. I feel it, you know. Um today is manliness consists not in bluff, bravado or loneliness. It consists in daring to do the right thing and facing consequences whether it is in social ma- it is in matters <laughs> social, political or other. It consists in deeds, not words. That's from Gandhi. So, you know, I got to end every show with the quote and that just kind of ties it up. I am really excited. You guys could be anywhere on a Friday night, and you guys are here with us. I appreciate you. You can find Ladies Night Radio Show every Friday here at the Good News Radio at 730. And thank you so much to everybody for being here. You can also follow me on Mysterious.Jax. That's that's right. And or at Ladies Night Radio Show. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I really appreciate all of you guys for the comments. And I'm sorry if I couldn't get back to everybody, but, you know, I love y'all. So I'm your host, Mr. E. Jax. This is Ladies Night Radio. And just remember one thing, ladies. You are enough. Yes. Now could you tell me like it is? Pretty little fears. Use it to my ear. I'm loving your light. Vulnerable. Letting your guard down. It's honorable. Especially when the past ain't been that Friendly to you, but there's magic in that You the flower that I gotta protect To keep alive in the wintertime Hey, don't you die yet You've been way more than a friend of mine We more like fam I raised you, you raised me Let's turn this whole life round You can confide in me I can take the weight up off your shoulder blades And try to store the pain inside of me Hey, why the world do you like that? Like they don't know you God sent, but me, I view you like that I'm sneaking glances, thanking God that he drew you like that Beautiful black child Come and shed your black cloud for your